let's use the issue of maybe healing. Let's start with healing. Healing. Okay. I'm his consultant. You come to me. You say, Pastor, I've tried this. I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried this. I've tried that. Then the first word I'll tell you to do is quit trying. What did I say? Quit. Uh, Pastor, wait, wait, wait. But they say we should do this. The word of God. Just quit trying. Anything you are doing, you are not doing it because you are trying to access your inheritance. No, 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 no. Just quit all that trying. And then rest in the finished work. Hmm. What do you mean by rest in the finished work? Listen to me. The finished work means that you have already been healed. Oh, pastor, I know that. I know that. I know that I've been healed. The finished work is not just that you have been healed. The finished work has given you an identity as the healed of the Lord. The finished work implies that you are not just the healed of the Lord. Chat, listen. But you are a recipient of divine life and divine health. Listen. The finished work means that there is a different law operating in you. Preach it, Pastor. Say, <laughs> take it here. The finished work means that the law that supervises death has been completely nullified and replaced with a law that supervises life and abundant life. That law, listen to me, listen to me, is called the law of divine health. It's a law. It's a legislation. It is embedded in every cell of your mortal body. I'm talking to you what the finished work is. So when we say we are resting in the finished work, you need to understand what you are resting in. The law at work in you is not the same law that's at work in the, uh, every other person in the world. There's a different law. That law is called the law of life. Part of the law of life is called the law of divine... How many people have you heard anywhere in YouTube talk about the law of divine health? It's a law. It's a law. The law of divine health. The law of wholesomeness. The law of not just healing. The law of the healed. When you know that, you're not begging for healing. You're not asking for, oh Lord, heal me. No, that's an insult. It shows you have not yet rest, you're not yet resting in the finished work. When you know that you know that you know that you know that you have been healed, how were you healed? How were you healed? Is it Jesus coming to say, no, be healed. I cast out malaria. No, 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 no. Your healing was a proper judicial process whereby Christ shocked into his own body all infirmities, sicknesses, diseases, including cancer, rheumatism, arthritis, tuberculosis, diabetes, low high blood pressure. He shocked it all into his body. As those stripes were being afflicted upon him, sicknesses, the totality of the sicknesses of the entire universe was placed into that. But listen to me. If you read Isaiah 52, it says his figure, his face, his whole body was completely disfigured that you would not have recognized it as a human. So you understand that what Christ did was he sucked out every sickness from you and created a new law whereby sickness and disease is not permitted to operate in your body. Am I making sense? Sickness, disease, is illegal for you to have expression. It's a trespasser. It's an intruder. I'm telling you, I'm not saying this for saying sake. 
They are violating the law of life. You are a candidate for the law of life. You are a candidate for the law of divine health. If you know that you know that you know that a different law by because of the law of the spirit of life in Christ has liberated you from the law of sin, sin sickness, Satan, and sorrow. So, let me tell you what happens. Let me tell you what happens. It is part of your prayer of appreciation. Father, I thank you. I'm the beloved of God. I thank you. I'm the forgiven of the Lord. I thank you. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I thank you. I'm the healed of the Lord. These are your identities. These are your identity aspects of your, your identities that you are bringing up. Don't wait. You don't say, you see, eh? some people, they don't remember their identity until when they get a diagnosis. Oh, you have um, lupus or uh, autoimmune disease. Then you know what they say. Oh, no, no, I'm the healed of the Lord. Don't wait till that time. It should be part of your daily thanksgiving. When you're worshipping God. Oh, I'm the beloved of the Lord. Oh, I'm the righteousness of God. Oh, I thank you, Father. I'm the healed of the Lord. It's your identity. The healed. I'm the redeemed. I'm the sanctified of the Lord. I am the righteousness of the Lord. That's how we, what it means. To rest. At this time, you're not putting in any efforts towards healing. So those of you who are used to, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm immersing myself in the word. I am immersing myself in the word because I am seeking for healing. Let me tell you, eh? that thing appears to be right. Okay, yes, immerse yourself in the word. Search out all the scriptures. Quote them a million times. Quote Listen to me, there's something not quite right. Because in that mode, you're in what they call believing mode. I am believing, I am believing, I am believing. When are you going to stop believing? Sorry, not stop believing. When will this your believing bear fruit? Faith is not an endless, you know, you don't have to endlessly believe God. No, we're not like the old testament believers who were hoping and hoping. They were hoping for a city of the Lord. They died still hoping. Nothing wrong with that. But now Jesus Christ has caused the shadows, has made the shadows substance. We have the substance. There is a finished work. We read it. It is finished. He's redeemed us from the curse of the law. And so right now, we're not believing. We know and we are thanking him. Quit trying. Another example is you are more than a conqueror. That's what the Bible says. Nay, in all these things. There's a scripture like that. It says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. It says, through him that loved us. Paracatonderia. You are more than a conqueror. That's what the Bible says. Listen to me. So how do I rest in the finished work that concerns conquest? Wait, listen, listen, listen to this. Every conquest that is required for your salvation, every conquest that is required for your peace, for your shalom, Christ has accomplished it. He made a public disgrace. He made a public disgrace of all principalities and all powers. He put them to shame. Stripped them of their power. Because he is the head of all principality and power. He defeated them. He nullified the authority. There is no outstanding request. There is no victory that is still undecided as far as it pertains to your salvation, your well-being, and your peace. 
Jesus conquered the world and he gave us the victory. What's the basis? What's the basis? Can I tell you the basis for this victory? It says, nay, if you read Romans 8, all kinds of things, persecution, storm, fam famine, sword, all those things. It says, in all these things, we're more than conquerors. None of these things can separate us from the love of God. It says, we're more than conquerors. More than conquerors through him that loved us. So what is the rest here, pastor? Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, I think it's verse 20 or 21, it says, the life I live now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved Robert and gave himself for Robert. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, Christ also loved Robert and had given himself for Robert and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and sermon. Christ loved me and gave himself for me. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved Robert. Christ loved the church, of which Robert is a partaker, and gave himself. Listen to me. The premise of your con of the conquest of Christ for you is his love, not your works. Not your works. Listen to me. Are you hearing? Not your works. You have no part in it. Listen to me. Eh? Please, please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. I'm begging you. Think, think, think. Don't let this thing I'm saying pass from one year and go through the The premise of your conquest or the conquest Christ has secured for you is simply on the premise of his love let me tell you how where his love originated from bible says even when we were helpless when we were lost when we are sinners god commended his love to us in that in that our helpless sinful condition when we are even enemies he died for us i just want to show you the premise of his love so if on that if you understand his love that his love is unconditional. His love is has nothing to do with your good or your bad. His love simply is premised on the potential he sees in you. Not on your weakness, not on your 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 in other words, he's not moved by your weakness. He's not moved by your condition some of us we may say okay wait pastor hold on i still feel i still feel i need to put in a little bit of effort to upgrade my standing before god who told you that your standing before god has anything to do with your standing pastor you don't understand i have this weakness i'm still grappling with it and i i, I feel that this weakness is hindering my prayers is making it impossible for me to achieve the level of victory or breakthrough that i have been desiring that's the problem you are being deceived you are being deceived you have not read what apostle paul said even the law the law cannot invalidate the promise the law cannot invalidate the promise so in your expectation your expectation should be pure your expectation should be without encumbrance your expectation should be just a beeline straight to what is the promise i settle in my heart that nothing has the power to invalidate my expectation my expectation is of the promise the inheritance was given to abraham and to his seed by promise listen to me i say this without reference reverence hmm? i say without reverence i'm not saying anybody should continue in sin but even your sin cannot interfere in your receiving the inheritance by faith because sin is a transgression of the law the law cannot bible says the law which came 430 years after it can't invalidate that promise it is impossible for righteousness righteousness is has nothing to do with the law the 
righteousness that qualifies you to be a partaker of this promise, Bible says it is of faith. The, unfortunately, the law is not of faith. The performance-based relationship with God, you are bearable from it. And therefore, in relating with God under this covenant of grace, what is required is, do you believe or you don't believe? When you start mixing things, you start bringing other factors into your interaction with the inheritance, then that's where you get into a problem. It doesn't matter how sincere you are. It doesn't matter how important you are. Listen to me. If your fertility is compromised, conception becomes a problem. You may be very good. You, you may be so good. You see some women, they've kept themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Somebody has told me to put something there. Flawless expectation. Your, in other words, your expectation should be as sure as, you know when I go to touch that switch? If I touch that switch, I know that light comes on. The expectation you have, it should be like that of a, like a child. The expectation of a child. The child knows without an iota of doubt. That when it is in morning time, mommy will set out breakfast for me. I, I, the child just knows it. I, when I mean child, I'm not talking of one, two years old. I'm talking about even child with sense that they, they, they are sensible. They are five, six, seven, even teenagers. They know when it is breakfast time. I am so confident in my expectation of breakfast. My the breakfast a child receives, it has nothing to do with his goodness. Or his, listen to me, I'm not here to preach foolish li lifestyle. No, I'm simply telling you, don't mix up your lifestyle with your expectation. Then don't, don't mix things up. There's a different purpose. There's a different word, purpose for living the right life. But when it comes to receiving your inheritance, you know what's your inheritance? You know what the Bible says? You're an heir. An heir of the promise. Why do you want to bring in the law to qualify your heirship? Oh, <laughs> something is happening to you. You know what some people tell me? It's an attack. It's an attack. Attack of who? Attack of the principalities, forces, and darkness. So they are powerful enough. The principalities are powerful enough. To deprive and to deny an heir of his inheritance, you are making a caricature of the gospel. You are making a caricature of the gospel. Whatever is hit at you, it can't stop you. Just get up. If the enemy hits you, get up and continue with your inheritance. What's your inheritance? Life. What's your inheritance? Peace. What's your inheritance? Health. What is your, let me tell you one of your most important inheritances, answered prayers. That is one of your most, if you allow the devil to trick you, to think, let me tell you, answers to prayers has nothing to do with your works. It has nothing to do with your works. It simply has to do with do you believe in the finished work? Nothing to add to it. Nothing to subtract from it. That finished work of redemption and restoration is not just perfect, it's complete, it's comprehensive, and it's eternal. Do you believe in the completeness of that finished work? Or do you feel that mm, there's still something that Christ did not complete in that finished work that's a lie because if that thing is if his finished work of redemption is incomplete then god the father will not ask him to sit down at his right hand but god said sit down until i make all your enemies your footstool so stop um you know some people there's there are certain things they're seeking for so they have prayed they are doing everything they can do that they can see in the scriptures they will do it then somebody comes up, oh, 
Ah, there's a new man in town. This man is highly anointed. This man has some powerful insight and all that. They start following him. Then they, the man comes up with one new thing. Then they start to do it. They start to do it. Then they come to the end of that road. They're looking for what next. What next is there to do? So they're always on the treadmill of what? Of efforts. The treadmill of outstanding to do. There's still an outstanding thing to do. So let me, and this thing is genuine. It's genuine. Okay. Go and search out all the scriptures on healing and begin to be, quote them, quote them, quote them. There's nothing wrong in that. But don't use that as the basis. Because I've not set out the scriptures of healing and all that. Therefore, I cannot get. You're bringing works. Another works. Another dimension of works. Let me tell you the truth. Can I give some examples? Can I give some examples? Jairus. Is it Jairus? Yes. Call Jesus. Jesus is on the way to go and minister to Jairus' daughter. Something interrupted him. Then on the way, somebody came and told, told Jairus, who, as far as I'm concerned, is just one of those agents that are meant to come against your faith. I said, don't bother the master. Your child is already dead. Thank God that Jesus heard those words. Thank God that Jesus knows the power of words. Thank God that Jesus is the word of God that was in the beginning, that was made flesh. When he heard those words that were directed at the heart of at the ears of Jairus. Do you know what he told Jairus? You know what he told him? You know what he told him? Fear not. Only believe. All that is required of you, Jairus, believe. Forget about any other consideration. Just believe. Are you understanding? Faith is the articulation of your expectation. When you are believing it, let me tell you the truth. A lot of things, they're called impeding thoughts, will hit your heart. They will bombard you when you are believing for stuff. Things will come up. Ah, but you, are, you still need to do this. Ah, you need to increase your prayer life. Ah, you are doing two hours. You need to increase it to three hours. Look at Pastor Robert. Blah, 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 those four hours. You are still doing two hours. How do you think you can get that breakthrough? Uh, you know, all these thoughts are coming to you. But what Jesus Christ is telling you? Only believe. Pastor Bob, I need to clean up my life. I really need to clean up my life. I have many outstanding issues, outstanding issues, people that I need to go and sort out issues with. I have a lot of outstanding restitution to do. I think these are the things in dream. Ah, the man that... Um, Told Jesus, who was was he on his right or his left? By the when Christ was on the cross, he said, "Remember me when you get to your kingdom." Jesus Christ just said, "You know what? You have a guaranteed place." What 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 was what did he do? What did he do to guarantee this man is a criminal, a murderer? What did he do to have a place in heaven? Only believe so. When it comes to expectations, when it comes to that special privilege of answered prayers, stop mixing things. I want this thing then to be so deeply inscribed in you to your heart, so that any time you receive any diagnosis or any verdict that is contrary to your expectation, I want you to dare to say, no, I don't believe this. It doesn't matter who the authority is. It could be your, your general practitioner, your GP, your doctor, your banker. Just say, if it's contrary to your friend, just say, no, I don't believe this. No, I'm not having this. Just say it. Just say it. Just say it. Don't be, but, oh, he will be angry. He'll be angry with me. He'll be annoyed with me. No. What's more important to you? The word of God? The word of the gospel? Which is more important to you? Oh, 
I feel that um, I just haven't been equal to this task. I feel that God is disappointed with me. I don't feel that he's, I don't feel I've measured up to God's expectation of me. I feel I've been lazy. I feel I have been disobedient. I feel I've, you know, you know, some people come, some people, when they're giving testimony, you say, ah, God gave me an instruction. I was disobedient. Since that time, God has stopped speaking to me. Since that time, I've, I've lost the presence of God. What kind of rubbish is this? What kind of rubbish thinking? It's just deceptive thinking. Do you understand? When the Bible says it is finished, when the Bible says that there is no law, no law that can disannul the promise, you are living by promise. You are not living by the law. You are living about the law. Your basis of interaction with your father, it is promise and not law. It is unconditional and not conditional. It is premised on your believing and not on your performance, not on your works. In other words, my inheritance has nothing whatsoever to do with any iota of effort from me. It has nothing to do with any thinking from me, any action from me, any words from me. It simply has to do with, do I believe the mediator of the New Testament? His name is Jesus, the Son of God. He died in my place and he died as me. The faith I have, the life I live, is actually by the faith of the Son of God. I see him as one who loved me and gave himself for me. It's on the basis of this love and the finished work of redemption and restoration that I anticipate and expect the best from heaven. Tarabasu to Kurika Tangabuya. Nikuriakata. Let me tell you, yeah, what I, remember what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to create a stress free atmosphere in your heart. When people begin to bring in conditions, it creates tension. Tension compromises fertility. Fe Compromise fertility will hinder conception. Hinder conception means your fruitfulness is compromised means your productiveness is compromised will encourage barrenness barrenness will create despair and hopelessness and so what do we do let's go back to the drawing board and let's begin to see what is my expectation is my expectation flawless am i allowing external considerations to begin to subtly subtly but by subtlety you know impede or compromise or cut down my expectation my expectation from my father the expect you see your inheritance bible says is eternal christ obtained it he obtained you didn't obtain it he obtained it for you so all you need to do is keep t demanding from that inheritance because it's there is there he has bequeathed unto you an inheritance that is that cannot fail that's eternal so what do you want go and take from it you have an open check you have a, a what they call that in um, atm card every time you want money you from your account you go you put into the machine punch in your code it asks ask you how much you want one thousand euro one thousand pounds one thousand dollars the moment you put it it will really there's no atm that argues with you God does not argue with you. Your inheritance is limitless. So how do you make withdrawals from your inheritance? Nothing but faith. Don't mix it up. What are you saying? Don't mix it up. So if it is victory, just declare it, I'm victorious. Christ conquered the world and has given me the conquest. 
Christ overcame. The, the trophy of victory has given unto me. He has cancelled all the handwriting of the ordinances that were contrary against me. So there's no premise for me to be denied my inheritance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Dude, stop thinking. Just demand it. Just ask for it. Just expect it. It will stop the devil from bringing up many reasons before. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't get this. He, let me tell you this. Let me tell you what will happen. He will give you about 10 reasons. Rational reasons. Why you won't get the thing you expected. 10 rational. Oh, no, no, no. You've passed the age. You can't have children. You've passed the age. You're not producing eggs. Oh, no, 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 no. This is it. That's 10 reasons. Which could come from experts. The experts can say, oh, no, no, no. This is this. That is that. You know, expert opinion. That's one. Two, he will tell you certain things. Make you think that God is not pleased with you. Make you think that you're out of alignment. And because of you're out of alignment, God will not answer you. Make you think that God has identified many reasons why he will not answer you. Make you think that there are certain things you need to do to measure up. One of the greatest deceptions for Christians is, I haven't studied the word enough. I have not studied. I, you know, okay, in the past six months, I have pasted like 10 scriptures on my fridge. I pasted like 10 scriptures on my shaving mirror. Or whatever it is, or my makeup mirror. Ah, no, 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 there's still a lot more. Then you discover about three or five more. Then you add the five more. And then you are laboring and struggling in trying to memorize and recant. As if it is works now. So every time you are feeling there's a sense of incompleteness. There's a sense of in, 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 insufficiency. I still have to do more. Let me tell you the truth. The fact of the matter is that if you quote 50 scriptures, you will still feel that there are, there's need more to do. If he shows you one thing to do, you will still feel that there's more to do. To the point that he can push you to start looking for natural means. Some people say, oh, you have to change lifestyle. Until you change your lifestyle, nothing can happen. You have to start walking a certain amount of steps before that healing can kick in. You have to start eating. To, then, hey, the most wicked one to me, the most wicked is, oh, you have to stop this. Cut this off. Cut that off. You can't eat it. Then new things are coming that are frightening people. Oh, they are that water you drink. It has contains this. Oh, hey, who are you? Do you know who you are? You, does your airship come by works? Does your airship come by what the world says? If they've discovered that this thing is dangerous, stop eating it. Stop drinking this. Stop eating that. They've discovered that using mobile phones can go, st stop this, stop. So they're bringing prohibitions. That What is that? Constriction, constriction, constriction. Until they put you into one kind of cage and bondage that you become allergic to almost anything, everything. You know what? Let that your mindset break out of bondage. He's my father. Not just that he's my father. Jesus Christ has established the perfect, eternally perfect premise for me to have unhindered, unconditional answers to my prayers. Why? Because Christ loved me and gave himself for me. Christ loved me and gave himself for me. And when he gave himself for me, he has taken me up, washed me in his blood, cleansed me with the water of his word, and is presenting me yeah, I, know, I know how he's presenting me. Can you see yourself in that state? He's presenting you to himself blameless. He's presenting you as holy. He's presenting you as spotless, without spot. Irreproachable. Irreprovable. That's how he presents me. You know what? You better see yourself in that light. Because when you see yourself in that light, you have the confidence. That's why the Bible says, come boldly. Come boldly. Come bo I have a high priest who understands my weakness, who is taught by my family, who knows my besetting sin, who knows my besetting weakness, who knows all those things. And you know what? When I come to him, he respects me of my besetting weakness and besetting sins. I still see myself as the righteousness of God. I still see myself in the perfection of the finished work. And I'm able to come boldly to the throne. Guess what happens? I obtain mercy. Guess what happens? I find grace to help me in that time of need. If you are constantly experiencing lack of assistance and lack of help, let me tell the truth. 
you are simply not appropriating grace. Pastor, no, 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 I won't do it. Yes, why are you not appropriating grace? Because you are mixing a lot of things and those things are compromising your faith. Can you learn to do away with all these impeding thoughts? Anything, whatever is being projected into your mind, whatever, whatever the thought is, just say no. I'm not accepting this thinking. I'm not accepting this suggestion. And no, it's not going to hinder my expectation. Oh, you've just got very bad news. Very, very bad news. You know what? I don't care. That bad news will not affect my expectation. Christ told that Jairus, only believe what happened at the end. His daughter came back to life. And so I'm going to be ruthless in dealing with with all these negative thoughts, impeding con considerations, and I will keep my expectation fixed and not allow anything to hinder it. You know what? God has blessed you. Do you know what? You have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. You have been blessed. So see yourself as blessed already. Rest in it. And thank him for it. And any demand you're making, you're making the demand on the basis that you are already blessed. Making the demand that you're already a more than a conqueror. So when challenges come, don't see yourself as fighting your adversaries or fighting a circumstance because you are trying to conquer it and obtain a victory. No. Every circumstance has already been defeated. There is no circumstance that will come your way that will ever subdue you. You are, you know what the Bible calls more than a conqueror. In the in the um, Greek, it says you are super abundantly greater than the overcomer. You're not just an overcomer. You have. You are far above the you have overcome and overcome and overcome and overcome so to that it can never be heard that you were overcome because you are more than a conqueror you are more than an overcomer is this making sense even sin sin has been conquered sin has been conquered you know what sin has been conquered in that christ died he died once to sin therefore you reckon yourself indeed dead unto sin Sin will not dominate over you. The Bible says, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Why? Because Christ has conquered sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. He came in the form of sinful flesh. He was made the sin offering. And he condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned it. The body of sin has been destroyed. You are no longer a slave to sin. So when sin comes your way, just say it. Say it. I am not allowing sin to reign in my mortal body. Sin has been, see, just see, just see these words. Sin has been conquered. Sin has been condemned. Sin in the flesh has been condemned. Body of sin has been, say it. Body of sin has been what? Destroyed. When the devil is pushing, just say no. I am not yielding my members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. No. I am yielding myself as one who is alive from the dead unto God. And all my members, I am yielding them as instruments of righteousness unto God. Just say those things. You will see the power. He says, because of these things, you will never be subject to the dominion of sin. Because you are not under the law. You have come under grace. Hey! Kuriaba Dubaya. I want you to determine today that there's nothing that is hindering your expectation. There's nothing stopping you from getting that your desire now. What, what's stopping it? What, what's stopping it? Why can't you get the answers to your prayers now? What, why? Tell me why. Don't add anything. Only believe. Fear not. Only believe. Moses said, fear not, stand still. Only believe. He that believeth has entered into the mode of standing still. There's no more to do. Fear not. Don't fear. Fear not. Fear not, man. Fear not, circumstance. Hold tight 
onto your expectation. Let not your expectation dwindle. Let not your expectation go up and down because of what you're seeing. This is the body of Christ. More than a conqueror. Through him who loved me. Then he says, I live by the faith of the son who loved me and gave himself for me. Gave himself for me. His love was demonstrated by taking my place. And dying for me and asked me. He died for me. He loved me and died for me. That is why his victory is my victory. His success is my success. His inheritance is my inheritance. His righteousness is my righteousness. Just simply see it as that. On that premise, his favor before the Father is the same favor I have. Co heir with him. I'm co heir with him. I'm seated with him. So I don't see my flaws. I don't see my circumstances. My whole vision is engulfed in the limitlessness of the one I am identified with. He is Christ, seated at the right hand of God the Father, far above, far above, all principality and power. The one unto whom all things were made for. The one who is heir of all things. I am one with him. I refuse to dwell in the realm of rationalizing or reasoning. I'm not reasoning with the world. I'm not reasoning with family. I'm not reasoning with colleagues. No, I refuse to reason. Any reasoning that is contrary to the word of the gospel, I discountenance it. I fixed my attention on the finished work. I don't care what any other thing is saying. I don't care what other theory you're coming up with. All I know that the work is finished and nothing can ever disqualify me because the Bible says my inheritance has been given unto me on the premise of promise. No law, no legalism, no conditionality can invalidate the promise. Nothing can make the promise of non-effect in my life. Except I deliberately put myself under the law. But you know what? Bible says I'm dead to the law. Bible says I've been extricated from the law of sin and death. Therefore, nothing can invalidate the promise. You have your promise. The promise of your inheritance. You are an heir according to the promise. You know what? As we partake of the broken body of Christ, just begin to make demands on your inheritance. Make demands. Today, you withdraw 30,000. Tomorrow, you withdraw 50,000. Next tomorrow, you withdraw 100,000. Next tomorrow, next tomorrow, you withdraw 1 million. Next tomorrow, next tomorrow, next tomorrow, you withdraw 100 million. Listen to me. It's inexhaustible. The source of your inheritance is inexhaustible. So just keep, just keep demanding. Just keep demanding. Just keep collecting. You know, collect, go to your bank, make the withdrawals, make the withdrawal because you need the money. You need the money. If you want to buy a house, you go and make a, a withdrawal for the amount, buy a house. Want your husband, make the demand. Make the demand. Oh, pastor, I'm out of age. Oh, there's no good man. He, who told you that? Let me tell you, God is prepared to create a husband for you today. He will just drop from heaven. Suddenly you hear, you hear about the history, but he, God made him for you. Ex do, don't bother about the, oh, how will this work? Don't bother about how will this work? Don't, don't you know what I'm saying? How will it happen? How, well, what I can see, I can't see any source of additional income. That's not your problem. God has the ability of bringing water out of rock. God has the ability of producing rivers in the desert. God has the ability of bringing the dead back to life. So stop thinking with him all things are possible. Just that's, that is what you fill your mind with him all things that should be your thinking your thoughts the body of christ he loved me he gave himself for me he loved me on that basis i eat of his flesh Pastor Widow, Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love him and that are called 
pastor, the devil is telling me that I don't love him enough. That's why all things are not working out for my good. You know what you tell him? You know what you tell the devil? It's not so much my love. It is more his love for me. I see his love for me. And I dare to love him back. He loved me first. And I acknowledge his love for me. And because I acknowledge his love for me, there will be a natural reciprocal response in my heart. So my boast is in the fact that he loved me first. Therefore, if he loved me, all things will work together for my good. It is through the blood that my sins were remitted. Faith in the blood. Faith in the blood. Do you have faith in the blood? Yes. Say yes. I have faith in the blood. Say it. My sins are completely remitted. Say it. On the premise of that, there is no guilt in my heart. Guilt compromises fertility. Say it. I reject and renounce every form of condemnation. Say it. I reject every sense of reproach and shame. Say it. I refuse every sense of inferiority. Say it. I'm no longer looking at myself. I'm not wallowing in low uh, 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 self-worth. I'm not, no. I see a new identity. The identity of Christ. The cup of the blood. I'm a partaker of it. This covenant is by promise. And I release faith to receive the promise. Let us drink. Bakuria batur basaraka just pray in the spirit. Takuria katar kabutaria. Makuria katar kashigaria. Listen to me. This moment, eh? There is nothing that can stop answers to your prayers. Pastor, pray for the last 10 years. It doesn't matter. Stop praying. Just thank him and say, Father, I thank you tonight as your loving son. I receive answers to my prayers. Father, I know that you are touched by the feeling of my infirmity. Father, I know according to your word, you will not withhold any good thing from me. Father, I am not believing I'm believing any longer. No, 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 no. I know you love me. I know you have answered my prayers. I receive with thanksgiving. Answered prayers. All these things I've been waiting for all these years and thinking that it, your response is based on my own works, on my own input, on my own improvement, on certain things that I was standing for which I need to just accomplish. I, I repent of that foolish belief. Today I acknowledge that you have done everything, everything that pertains to life and to godliness you have given unto me. On that basis, I make my demands. Thank you for unprecedented prosperity. Thank you for unprecedented health. Thank you for unprecedented healing. Thank you for unprecedented satisfaction. Thank you for unprecedented victories. All those things that have exacted upon me. All those things that I've been battling with and they have defied my faith. They've defied my prayers. Thank you because I have effortless victory over all of them. Thank you because you spoiled principalities and powers. All of them. You made a public spectacle of, over them, of them. And you have given me the victory. Thank you for that. For that victory I am forced today. Nothing prevails against me. Thank you everlasting Father because I have all sufficiency in all things. You are my shepherd and I lack nothing. Now go to your specific requests. That thing that has been outstanding in the last couple of years. Just, just say Father today is the day that you have made. As far as this matter is concerned today is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this matter. In this matter, I say it. Today is, I'm not reasoning with any, any man. 
I'm not reasoning with any demon. I'm not reasoning with any circumstance. I'm not reasoning with any expert. I'm not reasoning with any professional. No, I simply believe the word according to Jesus. Said only believe, fear not. So I renounce fear and I choose to be to only believe. And on the premise of no fear and only believe, I begin to receive with thanksgiving. Say it, I receive with thanksgiving. I receive with thanksgiving. I receive with thanksgiving. I receive with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every wickedness that seeks to oppose my expectation. Father, I thank you because they are all judged. I'm not even wasting my time. I will not allow myself to be distracted by those satanic oppositions, satanic conspiracies, satanic machinations, satanic craft. I'm not going to be distracted by them. I'm keeping my focus upon the love of my soul. I'm just expectant, awaiting to receive. You know, do see the manifestations right now, not tomorrow, right now. See those manifestations. Those manifestations that will bring great joy to my heart. Those manifestations that will confirm the word of the Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. You have heard me, and I know it of a truth that you've heard me. From today, the manifestations of the, the miraculous, the manifestations of the marvelous starts now. Say it, it starts now. Say it, it starts now. Say it, it starts now. I believe in this work. I believe in this word of the finished work. Say it, I believe in the word of the finished work. And the Bible says, he that believeth has entered into his rest. Say it, I enter into my rest because I believe in the finished work. I'm not adding to it and nothing can disannul the promise as a result of the finished work. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no law, no law, there's no law, there's no legislation, there's no regulation, there's no ordinance that can stop me from enjoying my inheritance from tonight every aspect of my inheritance comes into my possession i take possession of them and i begin to enjoy them answered prayers answer listen to me your prayer will be answered in fact you ask for one god gives you four you ask for two god gives you eight your prayers will be oh god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you ask that word is becoming true in my life. Say, that word is becoming true in my life. And before then, he says that you may understand the length, the breadth, the width, the height of the love of Christ. And when that happens, God begins to do exceedingly abundantly. Why? Because we come to a full understanding of his love. And say today, because the Lord loves me, he answers me above everything I can ask or think. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now turn to everyone on the travel and say congratulations. Congratulations. Say you are entering Enter. into the season of marvels and wonders. Marvels and wonders. Jesus. Congratulations. Congratulations, Congratulations brethren. Season of marvels and wonders. Marvels and wonders. Congratulations. You are entering into the season of answered prayers. Mm. Entering into the season of answered prayers. Amen. Say it. God answers you exceedingly abundantly above all you have asked and all you will ask mm. god answers you exceedingly and abundantly above all that you have asked and all that you will ask okay say so for all of us for all of us we are rejoicing we are, we are rejoicing. rejoicing standing in unity of faith standing, standing, in, unity of faith. standing in one accord standing in one accord, standing in one accord. And standing on the efficacy of the word of God. Standing on the efficacy of the word of God. God answers us. God answers, God answers us. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Above. 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 Beyond. Beyond. All we ask. All we ask. Yes. All we have asked. All we have asked. And all that we will ask. And all that we will ask. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name, the mighty name of Jesus. We are coming back to this platform. We are, we are coming, coming back to this platform. And this platform is re reputed. And this, platform and this platform is reputed. As a platform of answered prayers. As a platform of answered prayers. The minutest prayer is answered. 
The greatest prayers are answered. That is our main feature on this platform. That is our main feature on this platform. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you have to describe this with something different. Something different. Remarkable responses and restoration to everyone. Terrific transformation. Supernatural shift has to be your testimony. Amen.